All right, what's going on, everyone? I am Dylan Winspear, the host of the Design Today podcast. And on this episode of Design Today, we're gonna do something a little bit different than in times past. Uh, as you know, we've done interviews every other week for the last year and a half. Uh, and on those off weeks, I've been doing rants, all topics that I've been kind of getting out of a, a survey that I did about a year ago. But there's been a couple things that have come to light recently where I was just like, you know what, let me try something new and see if I can answer some uh, some questions that you guys might have. So I posted out on social media, I asked around to see if anyone was interested in having questions that they wanted discussed, featured on the episode today, and the response was actually pretty astounding. It was actually pretty cool. Uh, so I appreciate all those who sent me direct messages, who tweeted me, who emailed me, uh, where else, or Slack messaged me. Uh, your, message, your messages have filled up a good amount's worth of content. So I think I'll be able to do this in the future. So again, here's my plug. We'll do this again next month. And if you've got questions that you wanna hear discussed, go ahead and shoot me a message and let me know. So let's crack this thing open and let me pull up a couple of those questions that were sent in. Uh, the first question that I got was uh, from a Lambda student of mine. Her name's Sarah Eckert. And she asked, uh, I'm curious what you personally find the most rewarding about UX? Uh, and that's a good question. I appreciate the question. I mean, you didn't have to know about me, but you want to know about me, so thank you. Uh, I want to answer that how. Um, I think the thing I find most rewarding about UX um, has probably evolved over the years. Uh, to start, I was always just interested in design, like graphic design. Uh, but as I got more into that world of freelance graphic design, I found that I was just arguing with people about what choices were the best choices. You know, should I make this button green or should I make it blue? Should I make the sign up form look like this or like that? And uh, would this convert users better than this convert user? It was always just like an argument. Um, and I didn't like that. I didn't like that. It's not my personality to argue over something trivial. Uh like a button color when there are other means of coming up with a better solution. Those better means were things like testing it and just A-B test it, find out which button became better. So that's initially what really drew me to user experience design was just it didn't have to be based on opinion and I could put some analytics to it and I could figure out what the right answer was. Uh, and there was a difference between right answers and wrong answers and that, that rhyme and reason wasn't just somebody's opinion. Mm, okay, but today, what's the most rewarding part about UX? Um, today, again, it's evolved because I still like to be involved in like the visual design, uh, but I also like to be involved in the strategy and I like to be involved with the teams. And I, I like, I guess if I were to put anything to it, I like empathy. I like understanding different people who come from different walks of life with different backgrounds and cultures and influences. Uh, I like empathy. And I've, I've said this in other rants. I feel like empathy has not only made my career better, uh, but I do feel like it's made me a better person, as cliche as that might sound. Uh, and I like that empathy is at, at the center of what we do as UX designers. So thanks, Sarah, for the question. Again, what's uh, the most rewarding part about UX for me? I'm going to just wind it down and say it's empathy. I enjoy being able to understand people who are different from me. Uh, another question I got came from Josh Thorne, who's actually a friend of mine. He actually works at Domo. Uh, he's kind of dabbling in the UX field as well. He says, do you have a UX Bible, uh, a book or website that you use as a reference for designs? Um, do I have something that I use as a reference for visual design? I don't have a, a book for that, only because visual design tends to change so quickly that books would just go out of date. So for visual design, I do have a lot of resources. Uh, and don't hang me for saying this, but actually Pinterest is one of my favorite resources for inspiration. Uh, but I've actually got another website that I go to pretty frequently called Web Designer Depot. It's obviously been around for a long time since it was called Web Designer Depot. But it's much more than just web design as it is app design, mobile design, a lot of, a lot of different interface design. Uh, it's built for designers, product managers, developers. So it kind of covers the gamut. And I find like I get a ton of inspiration from Web Designer Depot. Uh, but as far as UX inspiration goes, yes, I do collect a ton of UX books. But I don't know if I use any of them as a Bible per se. Let me think. Let me look. Um, 
I don't know. I have referenced uh, the design of everyday things pretty frequently. I've referenced the best interface is no interface. That's one I read recently. Um, I don't know. I, I read books, but I don't use them as a Bible. There is a resource, though, that I do reference probably more often than not, and I check pretty regularly to see if there's any new studies coming out of it. Uh, but the Nielsen Norman Group website is something that I frequent uh, probably on a weekly basis just to see what's new. And I like their studies and the content that they continue to push out. So Don Norman, the author of Design of Everyday Things, uh, his group, the Nielsen Norman Group, uh, you can find their their website uh, by searching that. Uh, and let me just get to one more question so I don't go too long. What is the ideal relationship between UX and product management? How should they work together and when should they work independently? That is a fantastic question. I actually did an a interview not too long ago with um, a couple friends of mine who are at Chatbooks. And I can reference that episode uh, in the comments section. So if you want to go back and listen to it, it's a great one. It talks about that ideal working relationship. If I were to boil it down to just one bullet point, it's trust and communication and allowing each other to do their job. Uh, personally, I work with a lot of great product managers uh, who've got different skill sets than I do. And, you know, their organization, their product, their project management skills, their uh, a salesmanship, I guess, is, is a word you could probably say to sell it. Uh, they've just got different skill sets that I don't. Uh, they're involved in the usability testing. They're involved in the user interviews. They're involved in the, uh, I guess, the analytics and what's driving everything. Uh, they're not involved in the visual side. They leave that to me, just as I'm not involved in some of the project management side. Um, so it's a give and take relationship that's built on a foundation of trust and just allowing us to do our responsibility. And I really boiled down a ton of concepts that were covered in that episode I mentioned. Uh, so again, I'll link that one, and I would encourage you uh, to go back and and that was Justin Jackman. I'd encourage encourage you, Justin, go back and uh, check out that episode and, and learn a little bit more about that ideal relationship between UX and PM. That is about all the time I've got today to do this little rant. Uh, again, we'll do it again next month. There's six questions that I didn't get to today. Obviously can't get to all of them, but uh, if you want to continue to send in your questions, whether it be through Slack, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, reach out, shoot the question over, I'll document it and I'll pull it up next time. Uh, for a Q&A session on design today. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Design Today. Uh, next week, we're featuring... I can't remember. But it's going to be a great episode, so you want to come back next week for our next episode. Uh, that's a wrap for Design Today. See you later. <laughs>